chapters twenty one through thirty of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge twenty one in the papyrus of ani the twenty-first chapter follows the twenty-second but it is there given without title and without vignette in the turin papyrus published by lepsius the twenty-first and twenty-second chapters are quite distinct and each has its own title while a single vignette stands over both in the vignette a priest is shown holding a vase in the left hand and the ram-headed serpent-like instrument called ur hekau that is great of enchantments in the right with the latter he is about to touch the mouth of the deceased who is standing before him behind the deceased is a man seated on a chair and holding a staff in his left hand text the chapter of giving a mouth to the overseer of the house new triumphant in the underworld he saith homage to thee o thou lord of brightness thou who art at the head of the great house prince of the night and of thick darkness i have come unto thee being a pure khu thy two hands are behind thee and thou hast thy lot with thy ancestors o grant thou unto me my mouth that i may speak therewith and guide thou to me my heart at the season when there is cloud and darkness chapter twenty two vignette in the papyrus of nebseni the guardian of the balance is seen with his right hand stretched out to touch the mouth of the deceased who stands before him in other papyri the deceased himself is seen standing with either his right or his left hand raised to his mouth text the chapter of giving a mouth to osiris ani the scribe and teller of the holy offerings of all the gods triumphant in the underworld he saith i rise out of the egg in the hidden land may my mouth be given unto me that i may speak therewith in the presence of the great god the lord of the tuat underworld may my hand and my arm not be forced back in the presence of the sovereign princes of any god i am osiris the lord of ristal may i osiris the scribe ani triumphant have a portion with him who is on the top of the steps according to the desire of my heart i have come from the pool of fire and i have quenched the fire chapter twenty three vignette the statue of ani the scribe seated upon a pedestal in the form of the emblem of maat right and truth before it stands the sem priest clad in a panther's skin and holding in his right hand the ram-headed serpent-like instrument ur hekau with which he is about to touch the lips of the statue and so perform the ceremony of opening the mouth at his feet are a sepulchral box for holding unguents etc three instruments called respectively seb ur tun tet and tamanu and the object called pesh and kef in the papyrus of nebseni the scene is described as the sem priest performing the ceremony of the opening of the mouth text the chapter of opening the mouth of osiris the scribe ani triumphant saith may the god ptah open my mouth and may the god of my city loose the swathings even the swathings which are over my mouth moreover may thoth being filled and furnished with charms come and loose the bandages even the bandages of set which fetter my mouth and may the god tem hurl them at those who would fetter me with them and drive them back may my mouth be open may my mouth be unclosed by shu with his iron knife wherewith he opened the mouth of the gods i am the goddess sekhet and i sit upon my place in the great wind of heaven i am the great goddess sa who dwelleth among the souls of anu heliopolis 
now as concerning every charm and all the words which may be spoken against me may the gods resist them and may each and every one of the company of the gods withstand them chapter twenty four vignette this chapter has no vignette in the theban papyri text the chapter of bringing charms unto osiris ani in the underworld he saith i am tem compara who brought himself into being upon the thigh of his divine mother those who are in nu the sky are made wolves and those who are among the sovereign princes are become hyenas behold i gather together the charm from every place where it is and from every man with whom it is swifter than greyhounds and quicker than light hail thou who towest along the machant boat of ra the stays of thy sails and of thy rudder are taut in the wind as thou sailest up the pool of fire in the underworld behold thou gatherest together the charm from every place where it is and from every man with whom it is swifter than greyhounds and quicker than light the charm which created the forms of being from the mother and which either createth the gods or maketh them silent and which giveth the heat of fire unto the gods behold the charm is given unto me from wherever it is and from him with whom it is swifter than greyhounds and quicker than light or as others say quicker than a shadow chapter twenty five vignette in the greater number of the theban papyri this chapter is without vignette in the brockhurst papyrus however the sem priest wearing a panther's skin is seen holding up before the face of the deceased who stands before him a small bearded figure like an ushabti in the turin papyrus the priest and the deceased are standing facing each other and no ceremony is being performed text the chapter of making a man to possess memory in the underworld the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant the overseer of the palace the son of the chief chancellor amenhetep saith may my name be given to me in the great house and may i remember my name in the house of fire on the night of counting the years and of telling the number of the months i am with the divine one and i sit on the eastern side of heaven if any god whatsoever should advance unto me let me be able to proclaim his name forthwith chapter twenty six vignette describe ani clothed in white and with his heart in his right hand addressing the god anpu anubis jackal-headed in his left hand which is outstretched ani holds a necklace of several rows of coloured beads the clasp is made in the form of a pylon or gateway and on the side of the pendant which is in the same form is a representation of a scarab or beetle in a boat to typify the sun god ra Kapera in his boat from the pendant hangs lotus flowers and other theban papyri the vignettes are different in the papyrus of nebseni the god anubis who dwelleth in the city of embalmment gives a heart to the deceased and in others the deceased is seen either being embraced by anubis or addressing his heart which rests upon a standard before him in the turn papyrus the deceased is seen kneeling before his own soul which is in the form of a human-headed hawk and clasping his heart to his breast with his left hand text the chapter of giving a heart to osiris ani in the underworld he saith may my heart ah be with me in the house of hearts may my heart hot be with me in the house of hearts may my heart be with me and may it rest there or i shall not eat of the cakes of osiris on the eastern side of the lake of flowers neither shall i have a boat wherein to go down the nile nor another wherein to go up nor shall i be able to sail down the nile with thee may my mouth be given to me that i may speak therewith and my two legs to walk therewith and my two hands and arms to overthrow my foe may the doors of heaven be opened unto me may seb the prince of the gods open wide his two jaws unto me may he open my two eyes which are blindfolded may he cause me to stretch apart my two legs which are bound together 
and may anpu anubis make my thighs firm so that i may stand upon them may the goddess second make me to rise so that i may ascend unto heaven and may that be done which i command in the house of the ka of ptah i understand with my heart i have gained the mastery over my heart i have gained the mastery over my two hands i have gained the mastery over my legs i have gained the power to do whatsoever my ka pleaseth my soul shall not be fettered to my body at the gates of the underworld but i shall enter in peace and i shall come forth in peace chapter twenty seven vignette the scribe ani with hands raised in adoration and his heart which is set upon a pedestal in the presence of four gods who are seated upon a pedestal in the form of the emblem of maat in the term papyrus the deceased is shown kneeling before the four children of horus text the chapter of not letting the heart hati of a man be taken from him in the underworld saith osiris ani hail ye who carry away hearts hail ye who steal hearts and who make the heart of a man to go through its transformations according to his deeds let not what he hath done harm him before you homage to you o ye lords of eternity ye possessors of everlastingness take ye not this heart of osiris ani into your grasp this heart of osiris and cause ye not words of evil to spring up against it because this is the heart of osiris ani triumphant and it belongeth unto him of many names thoth the mighty one whose words are his limbs and who sendeth forth his heart to dwell in his body the heart of osiris ani is triumphant it is made new before the gods he hath gained power over it he hath not been spoken to according to what he hath done he hath gotten power over his own members his heart obeyeth him he is the lord thereof it is in his body and it shall never fall away therefrom i osiris the scribe ani victorious in peace and triumphant in the beautiful amenta and on the mountain of eternity bid thee to be obedient unto me in the underworld chapter twenty eight vignette in some papyri containing the theban recension of the book of the dead this chapter has no vignette in the papyrus of nefer uben f the deceased is seen holding his heart upon his breast with his left hand and kneeling before a tailed monster in human form who holds a knife in his right hand and grasps his tail with the left another papyrus shows the deceased offering incense to osiris who standing on a pedestal in the form of maat holds the flail and sceptre in his hands in the brocklehurst papyrus the deceased is kneeling and holding his heart in his left hand which is outstretched in the turin papyrus the deceased is adoring his heart which is placed on a pedestal before a seated deity text the chapter of not letting the heart of the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant be carried away from him in the underworld he saith hail thou lion god i am the flower bush unb that which is an abomination unto me is the divine block let not this my heart be carried away from me by the fighting gods in anu hail thou who dost wind bandages round osiris and who hast seen set hail thou who returnest after smiting and destroying him before the mighty ones this my heart sitteth and weepeth for itself before osiris it hath made supplication for me i have given unto him and i have decreed unto him the thoughts of the heart in the house of the god usek ra and i have brought to him sand at the entry to kemenu hermopolis magna let not this my heart be carried away from me i make thee to dwell upon his throne o thou who joinest together hearts in sekhet hetep with years of strength against all things that are an abomination unto thee and to carry off food from among the things which belong unto thee and are in thy grasp by reason of the twofold strength and this my heart is devoted to the decrees of the god tem who leadeth me into the dens of sudi but let not this my 
heart which hath done its desire before the sovereign princes who are in the underworld be given unto him when they find the leg and the swathings they bury them chapter twenty nine vignette ani standing with a staff in his hand in the turin papyrus this chapter has no vignette text the chapter of not letting the heart of a man be taken away from him in the underworld osiris ani triumphant saith turn thou back o messenger of every god is it that thou art come to carry away this my heart which liveth but my heart which liveth shall not be given unto thee as i advance the gods hearken unto my offerings and they all fall down upon their faces in their own places chapter twenty nine a vignette this chapter has no vignette text the chapter of not allowing the heart of amen hetep triumphant to be carried away dead in the underworld the deceased saith my heart is with me and it shall never come to pass that it shall be carried away i am the lord of hearts the slayer of the heart i live in the right and truth maat and i have my being therein i am horus the dweller in hearts who is within the dweller in the body i live in my word and my heart hath being let not my heart be taken away from me let it not be wounded and may neither wounds nor gashes be dealt upon me because it hath been taken away from me let me have my being in the body of my father seb and in the body of my mother nut i have not done that which is held in abomination by the gods let me not suffer defeat there but let me be triumphant chapter twenty nine b vignette a heart text chapter of a heart of carnelian osiris ani triumphant saith i am the benu the soul of ra and the guide of the gods in the tuat underworld their divine souls come forth upon earth to do the will of their cause let therefore the soul of osiris ani come forth to do the will of his ka chapter thirty vignette the deceased with hands raised in adoration standing before a beetle placed on a pedestal text the chapter of not letting the heart of a man be driven away from him in the underworld osiris auf ankh triumphant born of sherat amsu triumphant saith my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart of my existence upon earth may not stand up to oppose me in judgment may there be no opposition to me in the presence of the sovereign princes may no evil be wrought against me in the presence of the gods may there be no parting of thee from me in the presence of the great god the lord of amentet homage to thee o thou heart of osiris kent amentet homage to you o my reigns homage to you o ye gods who dwell in the divine clouds and who are exalted or holy by reason of your sceptres speak ye fair words for the osiris auf ankh and make ye him to prosper before nehebka and behold though i be joined unto the earth and am in the mighty innermost part of heaven let me remain on the earth and not die in amentet and let me be a coup therein for ever and ever rubric this chapter shall be recited over a basalt scarab which shall be set in a gold setting and it shall be placed inside the heart of the man for whom the ceremonies of opening the mouth and of anointing with unguent have been performed and there shall be recited by way of a magical charm the words my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart of transformations chapter thirty a vignette in many of the papyri containing the theban recension this chapter has no vignette in one however the vignette is a heart standing above a vase in another the deceased is seen adoring his heart and in another the deceased is standing before four gods one of whom is offering a heart to him text the chapter of not letting the heart of the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant be driven away from him in the underworld he saith o my heart my mother o my heart my mother o my heart of my existence upon earth may not stand up to oppose me in judgment in the presence of the lords of the trial let it not be said of me and of that which i have done he hath done deeds against that which is right and true may not be against me 
in the presence of the great god the lord of amentet homage to thee o my heart homage to thee o my heart homage to you o my reigns homage to you o ye gods who dwell in the divine clouds and who are exalted or holy by reason of your sceptre speak ye for me fair things to ra and make ye me to prosper before nehebka and behold me even though i be joined to the earth in the mighty innermost parts thereof let me remain upon the earth and let me not die in amentet but become a coup therein chapter thirty b vignette some papyri containing the theban recension give this chapter without any vignette and it is probable that this arises from the fact that it often appears as one of the texts which occur in the great judgment scene where it forms the prayer put into the mouth of the deceased see the papyrus of ani and the papyrus of hu nefer in the papyrus of nebseni the deceased kneels in one pan of the balance and he is being weighed against his heart which rests in the other in the presence of osiris the great god the governor of everlastingness the support of the beam is surmounted by a human head and the tongue of the balance is being scrutinized by a dog-headed ape seated on a pedestal who is called thoth the lord of the balance elsewhere this ape is seated on a pedestal with steps and is called the lord of kemenu hermopolis magna the righteous weigher in the papyrus of amenneb the deceased stands by the balance while a figure of himself is being weighed against his heart in this example of the scene the support of the beam is surmounted by the head of a jackal elsewhere the vignette is simply a heart or a scarab or the deceased seated adoring his heart or the deceased standing in adoration before a beetle which is the symbol of the god capera the self-created god and the type of the resurrection text the chapter of not letting the heart of osiris the scribe of the holy offerings of all the gods ani triumphant be driven from him in the underworld he saith my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart whereby i came into being may not stand up to oppose me at my judgment may there be no opposition to me in the presence of the sovereign princes Tachacha. may there be no parting of thee from me in the presence of him that keepeth the balance thou art my ka the dweller in my body the god kenemu who knitteth and strengtheneth my limbs mayest thou come forth into the place of happiness whither we go may the shenet the divine officers of the court of osiris who form the conditions of the lives of men not cause my name to stink let it be satisfactory unto us and let the listening be satisfactory unto us and let there be joy of heart unto us at the weighing of words let not that which is false be uttered against me before the great god the lord of amentet verily how great shalt thou be when thou risest in triumph rubric these words are to be said over a scarab of green stone encircled with a band of refined copper and having a ring of silver which shall be placed on the neck of the ku this chapter was found in the city of kemenu hermopolis magna under the feet of the statue of this god it was inscribed upon a slab of iron of the south in the writing of the god himself in the time of the majesty of the king of the north and of the south men Kaura triumphant by the royal son heru ta ta f who discovered it whilst he was on his journey to make an inspection of the temples and of their estates in some ancient papyri the text of this chapter is made to follow the rubric of chapter sixty four with which it had some close connection and in others it follows the rubric of chapter one hundred and eighteen the rubrical direction concerning chapter sixty four reads behold make a scarab of green stone wash it with gold and place it in the heart of a man the deceased and it will perform for him the opening of the mouth anoint it with unto unguent and recite over it as a charm the following words my heart my mother my heart my mother etc in the turn papyrus it follows chapter thirty which contains parts of chapters thirty a and thirty b end of chapters twenty one through thirty chapters thirty one through forty of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge 
chapter thirty one vignette in some ancient papyri the vignette of this chapter represents the deceased spearing a crocodile but in the saite recension the deceased is attacking four crocodiles text the chapter of beating back the crocodile that cometh to carry away the charm from new the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief triumphant the son of the overseer of the palace amenhetep triumphant in the underworld he saith get thee back return get thee back thou crocodile fiend sui thou shalt not advance to me for i live by reason of the magical words which i have by me i do not utter that name of thine to the great god who will cause thee to come to the two divine envoys the name of the one is beti and the name of the other is hra ken Maat. heaven hath power over its seasons and the magical word hath power over that which is in its possession let therefore my mouth have power over the magical word which is therein my front teeth are like unto flint knives and my jaw teeth are like unto the gnome of tutef hail thou that sittest with thine eyeball upon these my magical words thou shalt not carry them away o thou crocodile that livest by means of magical words in the turin papyrus the following lines are added to this chapter i am the prince in the field i even i am osiris who hath shut in his father seb together with his mother nut on the day of the great slaughter my father is seb and my mother is nut i am horus the first-born of ra who is crowned i am anpu anubis on the day of reckoning i even i am osiris the prince who goeth in and declareth the offerings which are written down i am the guarding of the door of osiris even i i have come i have become glorious or a coup i have been reckoned up i am strong i have come and i avenge mine own self i have sat in the birth-chamber of osiris and i was born with him and i renew my youth along with him i have laid hold upon the thigh which was by osiris and i have opened the mouth of the gods therewith i sit upon the place where he sitteth and i write down the number of the things which make strong the heart thousands of loaves of bread thousands of vases of beer which are upon the altars of his father osiris numbers of jackals wolves oxen red fowl geese and ducks horus hath done away with the sacrifices of thoth i fill the office of priest in the regions above and i write down there the things which make strong the heart i make offerings or offerings are made to me at the altars of the prince of tatu and i have my being through the oblations made to him i snuff the wind of the east by his head and i lay hold upon the breezes of the west thereby i go round about heaven in the four quarters thereof i stretch out my hand and grasp the breezes of the south which are upon its hair grant unto me air among the venerable beings and among those who eat bread rubric if this chapter be known by the deceased he shall come forth by day he shall rise up to walk upon the earth among the living and he shall never fail and come to an end never 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 chapter thirty two vignette four crocodiles advancing against the deceased who is spearing one of them text the chapter of beating back the crocodile that cometh to carry away the magical words from the ku in the underworld osiris auf ankh triumphant saith the mighty one fell down upon the place where he is or as others say upon his belly but the company of the gods caught him and set him up again my soul cometh and it speaketh with its father and the mighty one delivereth it from these eight crocodiles i know them by their names and what they live upon and i am he who hath delivered his father from them 
get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the west thou that livest upon the stars which never rest for that which is an abomination unto thee is in my belly o thou that hast eaten the forehead of osiris i am set get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the west for the serpent fiend naaw is in my belly and i will give him unto thee let not thy flame be against me get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the east who feedest upon those who eat their own filth for that which is an abomination unto thee is in my belly i advance i am osiris get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the east the serpent fiend naal is in my belly and i will give him unto thee let not thy flame be against me get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the south who feedest upon filth and waste and dirt for that which is an abomination unto thee is in my belly shall not the flame be on thy hand i am sept get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the south for i am safe by reason of my charm my fist is among the flowers and i will not give it unto thee get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the north who feedest upon what is offered within the hours for that which thou abominatest is in my belly let not thy venom be upon my head for i am tem get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the north for the goddess serket is in my belly and i have not yet brought her forth i am uach maati or murti the things which are created are in the hollow of my hand and those which have not yet come into being are in my body i am clothed and wholly provided with thy magical words o ra the which are in heaven above me and in the earth beneath me i have gained power and exaltation and a full breathing throat in the abode of my father ur the mighty one and he hath delivered unto me the beautiful amentet which destroyeth living men and women but strong is its divine lord who suffereth from weakness or as others say exhaustion twofold therein day by day my face is open my heart is upon its seat and the crown with the serpent is upon me day by day i am ra who is his own protector and nothing shall ever cast me to the ground chapter thirty three vignette this chapter is without a vignette in the papyrus of nu but in one manuscript the deceased with a knife in his hand is seen attacking four serpents and in another four serpents only are given text the chapter of repulsing serpents or worms nu the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief triumphant saith hail thou serpent rarek advance not hither behold seb and shu stand still now and thou shalt eat the rat which is an abominable thing unto ra and thou shalt crunch the bones of the filthy cat chapter thirty four vignette this chapter is without a vignette in the theban and saite recensions text the chapter of not letting osiris nu triumphant be bitten by snakes or worms in the underworld he saith o serpent i am the flame which shineth upon the opener of hundreds of thousands of years and the standard of the god tenpu or as others say the standard of young plants and flowers depart ye from me for i am the divine maftet chapter thirty five vignette this chapter is without a vignette in the papyrus of nu but in the brocklehurst papyrus three serpents form the vignette in the turin papyrus the vignette shows the deceased in the act of spearing a serpent text the chapter of not letting nu the chancellor-in-chief triumphant be devoured by serpents in the underworld he saith hail thou god shu behold tatu behold shu hail tatu shu hath the head-dress of the goddess hathor they nurse osiris behold the twofold being who is about to eat me alighting from the boat i depart and the serpent fiend sek sek passeth me by behold sam and aaket flowers are kept under guard this being is osiris and he maketh entreaty for his tomb 
the eyes of the divine prince are dropped and he performeth the reparation which is to be done for thee he giveth unto thee thy portion of right and truth according to the decision concerning the states and conditions of men chapter thirty six vignette this chapter is without a vignette in the papyrus of nu but in others containing the theban recension the vignettes either show the deceased spearing a beetle or standing with a knife in one hand and a staff in the other before a pedestal upon which stands the insect apshait which has been identified with the cockroach the apshait is probably the beetle which is often found crushed between the bandages of poorly made mummies or even inside the body itself where it has forced its way in search of food text the chapter of driving away ap sa it osiris nu the chancellor-in-chief triumphant saith depart from me o thou that hast lips which gnaw for i am kenemu the lord of peshenu and bring the words of the gods to ra and i report my message to the lord thereof chapter thirty seven vignette to you i with tails entwined upon the emblem of gold in the vignette of this chapter in the turin papyrus the deceased is seen spearing a serpent text the chapter of driving back the two merti goddesses nu the chancellor-in-chief triumphant saith homage to you ye two racket goddesses ye two sisters ye two mert goddesses i bring a message to you concerning my magical words i shine from the sektet boat i am horus the son of osiris and i have come to see my father osiris chapter thirty eight a vignette the deceased holding a sail symbolic of air text the chapter of living by air in the underworld the scribe nebseni the lord to whom veneration is paid saith i am the god tem who cometh forth out of new into the watery abyss i have received my habitation of amentet and have given commands with my words to the khus whose abiding places are hidden to the khus and to the double lion god i have made journeys round about and i have sung hymns of joy in the boat of kapera i have eaten therein i have gained power therein and i live therein through the breezes which are there i am the guide in the boat of ra and he openeth out for me a path he maketh a passage for me through the gates of the god seb i have seized and carried away those who live in the embrace of the god ur the mighty one i am the guide of those who live in their shrines the two brother gods horus and set and i bring the noble ones with me i enter in and i come forth and my throat is not slit i go into the boat of maat and i pass in among those who live in the atet boat and who are in the following of ra and are nigh unto him in his horizon i live after my death day by day and i am strong even as is the double lion god i live and i am delivered after my death i the scribe nebseni the lord of piety who filled the earth and come forth like the lily of mother of emerald of the god hetep of the two lands chapter thirty eight b vignette the deceased holding in his left hand a sail symbolic of air and attacking three serpents with a knife which he holds in his right hand in the turin papyrus the deceased holds a sail in the left hand and the symbol of life in the right text the chapter of living by air in the underworld knew the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief triumphant the son of the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief amenhetep triumphant saith i am the double lion god the first-born of ra and tem of ha keb ti the gods who dwell in their divine chambers those who dwell in their divine abodes have become my guides and they make paths for me as they revolve in the watery abyss of the sky by the side of the path of the boat of tem i stand upon the timbers of the boat of ra i recite his ordinances to the beings who have knowledge and i am the herald of his words to him whose throat stinketh i set free my divine fathers at eventide i close the lips of my mouth and i eat like unto a living being 
i have life in tatu and i live again after death like ra day by day chapter thirty nine vignette the deceased spearing a serpent text the chapter of driving back the serpent rerek in the underworld osiris mesemneter saith get thee back depart retreat from me o aapeth withdraw or thou shalt be drowned at the pool of nu at the place where thy father hath ordered that thy slaughter shall be performed depart thou from the divine place of birth of ra wherein is thy terror i am ra who dwelleth in his terror get thee back fiend before the darts of his beams ra hath overthrown thy words the gods have turned thy face backwards the lynx hath torn open thy breast the scorpion hath cast fetters upon thee and mayat hath sent forth thy destruction those who are in the ways have overthrown thee fall down and depart o apep thou enemy of ra o thou that passest over the region in the eastern part of heaven with the sound of the roaring thunder-cloud o ra who openest the gates of the horizon straightway on thy appearance apep hath sunk helpless under thy gashings i have performed thy will o ra i have performed thy will i have done that which is fair i have done that which is fair i have laboured for the peace of ra i have made to advance thy fetters o ra and apep hath fallen through thy drawing them tight the gods of the south and of the north of the west and of the east have fastened chains upon him and they have fettered him with fetters the god rekes hath overthrown him and the god hertit hath put him in chains ra seteth ra seteth ra is strong at his setting apep hath fallen apep the enemy of ra departeth greater is the punishment which hath been inflicted on thee than the sting which is in the scorpion goddess and mightily hath she whose course is everlasting worked it upon thee and with deadly effect thou shalt never enjoy the delights of love thou shalt never fulfil thy desire o apep thou enemy of ra he maketh thee to go back o thou who art hateful to ra he looketh upon thee get thee back he pierceth thy head he cutteth through thy face he divideth thy head at the two sides of the ways and it is crushed in his land thy bones are smashed in pieces thy members are hacked off thee and the god acre hath condemned thee o apep thou enemy of ra thy mariners are those who keep the reckoning for thee o ra as thou advancest and thou restest there wherein are the offerings made to thee as thou advancest as thou advancest towards the house the advance which thou hast made towards the house is a prosperous advance let not any baleful obstacle proceed from thy mouth against me when thou workest on my behalf i am set who let loose the storm-clouds and the thunder in the horizon of heaven even as doth the god necheb ab f hail saith the god tem make strong your faces o soldiers of ra for i have driven back the god nentcha in the presence of the divine sovereign princes hail saith the god seb make ye firm those who are upon their seats which are in the boat of capera take ye your ways grasping your weapons of war in your hands hail saith hathor take ye your armour hail saith nut come and repulse the god tcha who pursueth him that dwelleth in his shrine and who setteth out on his way alone namely neber chur who cannot be repulsed hail say those gods who dwell in their companies and who go round about the turquoise pool come o mighty one we praise and we will deliver the mighty one who dwelleth in the divine shrine from whom proceeds the company of the gods let commemorations be made for him let praise be given to him let words of praise be recited before him by you and by me hail saith nut to thy sweet one hail saith those who dwell among the gods he cometh forth he findeth his way he maketh captives among the gods he hath taken possession of the goddess nut and seb standeth up hail thou terrible one the company of the gods is on the march hathor quaketh with terror and ra hath triumphed over apep chapter forty 
vignette the deceased spearing a serpent which has sprung upon an ass and is biting into his neck text the chapter of driving back the eater of the ass osiris ra triumphant saith one get thee back hi thou impure one thou abomination of osiris thoth hath cut off thy head and i have performed upon thee all the things which the company of the gods ordered concerning thee in the matter of the work of thy slaughter get thee back thou abomination of osiris from the nesh met boat which advanceth with a fair wind ye are holy o all ye gods and ye have cast down headlong the enemies of osiris the gods of teir shout for joy get thee back o thou eater of the ass thou abomination of the god haas who dwelleth in the underworld i know thee i know thee i know thee i know thee who art thou i am two on thy face o fiend and devour me not for i am pure and i am with the time which cometh of itself thou shalt not come to me o thou that comest without being invoked and whose time of coming is unknown i am the lord of thy mouth get thee back thou and thy desires hail haos with his stone knife horus hath cut asunder thy members and thou art destroyed within thy company and thy bend or dwelling-place is destroyed for thee by the company of the gods who dwell in the cities of pe and tep he that slayeth thee there is in the form of the eye of horus and i have driven thee away as thou wast advancing and i have vanquished thee by the winds of my mouth o thou eater of those who commit sins who dost plunder and spoil i have committed no sin therefore let my palate and the writings with hostile charges against me upon them be given unto me i have done no wrong in the presence of the sovereign princes therefore shoot not thy venom at me i give do thou take according to what i order snatch me not away and eat me not for i am the lord of life the prince life health strength of the horizon end of chapters thirty one through forty chapters forty one through fifty of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge chapters forty one vignette the deceased armed with a knife and a short staff in the turin papyrus the deceased is piercing a serpent which lies writhing on a barred instrument text the chapter of driving away the slaughterings which are performed in the underworld nebseni the scribe and designer in the temples of upper and lower egypt he to whom fair veneration is paid the son of the scribe and artist Thena, triumphant saith hail tem i have become glorious or a coup in the presence of the double lion god the great god therefore open thou unto me the gate of the god seb i smell the earth i bow down so that my nose toucheth the ground of the great god who dwelleth in the underworld and i advance into the presence of the company of the gods who dwell with the beings who are in the underworld hail thou guardian of the divine door of the city of beta thou god neti who dwellest in amentet i eat food and i have life through the air and the god achur leadeth me with him to the mighty boat of capera i hold converse with the divine mariners at eventide i enter in i go forth and i see the being who is there i lift him up and i say that which i have to say unto him whose throat stinketh for lack of air i have life and i am delivered having lain down in death hail thou that bringest offerings and oblations bring forward thy mouth and make to draw nigh the writings or lists of offerings and oblations set thou right and truth firmly upon their throne make thou the writings to draw nigh and set thou up the goddesses in the presence of osiris the mighty god the prince of everlastingness who counteth his years who hearkeneth unto those who are in the islands or pools who raiseth his right shoulder who judgeth the divine princes and who sendeth osiris into the presence of the great sovereign princes who live in the underworld chapter forty two vignette 
the deceased standing before osiris with his left hand raised to his mouth or the deceased holding a serpent in his hands or the deceased addressing a serpent which has its head turned away or the deceased drawing a cord from round the top of a tet emblem of stability text the chapter of driving back the slaughterings which are performed in sutton henan osiris new triumphant saith o thou land of the sceptre literally wood o thou white crown of the divine form o thou resting place of the boat i am the child i am the child i am the child i am the child hail abu ur thou sayest day by day the slaughter block is made ready as thou knowest and thou hast come to decay i am ra the stablisher of those who praise him i am the knot of the god within the osir tree the doubly beautiful one who is more splendid than yesterday say four times i am ra the stablisher of those who praise him i am the knot of the god within the osir tree and my going forth is the going forth of ra on this day my hair is the hair of nu my face is the face of the disc my eyes are the eyes of hathor my ears are the ears of ap uat my nose is the nose of kenti kas my lips are the lips of anpu my teeth are the teeth of serket my neck is the neck of the divine goddess isis my hands are the hands of ba neb tatu my forearms are the forearms of neith the lady of sais my backbone is the backbone of suti my phallus is the phallus of osiris my reins are the reins of the lords of keraba my chest is the chest of the mighty one of terror my belly and back are the belly and back of seket my buttocks are the buttocks of the eye of horus my hips and legs are the hips and legs of nut my feet are the feet of ptah my fingers and my leg bones are the fingers and leg bones of the living gods there is no member of my body which is not the member of some god the god thoth shieldeth my body altogether and i am ra day by day i shall not be dragged back by my arms and none shall lay violent hold upon my hands and shall do me hurt neither men nor gods nor the sainted dead nor those who have perished nor any one of those of ancient times nor any mortal nor any human being i am he who cometh forth advancing whose name is unknown i am yesterday and seer of millions of years is my name i pass along i pass along the paths of the divine celestial judges i am the lord of eternity and i decree and i judge like the god capera i am the lord of the ureret crown i am he who dwelleth in the uchat and in the egg in the uchat and in the egg and it is given unto me to live with them i am he that dwelleth in the uchat when it closeth and i exist by the strength thereof i come forth and i shine i enter in and i come to life i am in the uchat my seat is upon my throne and i sit in the abode of splendour before it i am horus and i traverse millions of years i have given the decree for the establishing of my throne and i am the ruler thereof and in very truth my mouth keepeth an even balance both in speech and in silence in very truth my forms are inverted i am unnefer from one season even unto another and what i have is within me i am the only one who proceedeth from an only one who goeth round about in his course i am he who dwelleth in the uchat no evil thing of any form or kind shall spring up against me and no baleful object and no harmful thing and no disastrous thing shall happen unto me i open the door in heaven i govern my throne and i open up the way for the births which take place on this day 
I am the child who marcheth along the road of yesterday. I am to-day for untold nations and peoples. I am he who protecteth you for millions of years. And whether ye be denizens of the heavens, or of the earth, or of the south, or of the north, or of the east, or of the west, the fear of me is in your bodies. I am he whose being has been moulded in his eye, and shall not die again my moment is in your bodies but my forms are in my place of habitation i am he who cannot be known but the red ones have their faces directed towards me i am the unveiled one the season wherein the god created the heavens for me and enlarged the bounds of the earth and made great the progeny thereof cannot be found out but they fail and are not united again my name setteth itself apart from all things and from the great evil which is in the mouths of men by reason of the speech which i address unto you i am he who riseth and shineth the wall which cometh out of a wall and only one who proceedeth from an only one there is never a day that passeth without the things which appertain unto him being therein passing 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 verily i say unto thee i am the sprout which cometh forth from new and my mother is not hail o my creator i am he who hath no power to walk the great knot who is within yesterday the might of my strength is within my hand i myself am not known but i am he who knoweth thee i cannot be held with the hand but i am he who can hold thee in his hand hail o egg hail o egg i am horus who lived for millions of years whose flame shineth upon you and bringeth your hearts to me i have the command of my throne and i advance at this season i have opened a path and i have delivered myself from all evil things i am the dog-headed ape of gold three palms and two fingers high which hath neither arms nor legs and dwelleth in het ka pata memphis and i go forth as goeth forth the dog-headed ape that dwelleth in het ka pata in the papyrus of ani sheet thirty two only a portion of this chapter is given that is the section which gives the names of the deities with whom the various members of the body of the deceased are identified this section is arranged in tabular form and carefully drawn vignettes giving pictures of the gods mentioned are added the following is the translation vignette the god new text the hair of osiris ani triumphant is the hair of nu vignette ra hawk-headed and wearing a disc text the face of osiris the scribe ani triumphant is the face of ra vignette the goddess hathor with horns and a disc on her head text the eyes of osiris ani triumphant are the eyes of hathor vignette the god apuat jackal-headed on a standard text the ears of osiris ani triumphant are the ears of apuat vignette the god anpu jackal-headed text the lips of osiris ani triumphant are the lips of anpu vignette the scorpion goddess circuit holding the emblems of life and eternity text the teeth of osiris ani triumphant are the teeth of circuit vignette the goddess isis text the neck of osiris ani triumphant is the neck of isis vignette a ram-headed god having a serpent between his horns text the hands of osiris ani triumphant are the hands of ba neb tatu vignette the goddess uachit text the shoulder of osiris ani triumphant is the shoulder of uachit vignette the goddess mert standing on the symbol of gold her hands outstretched and she has on her head a cluster of plants text the throat of osiris ani triumphant is the throat of mert vignette the goddess neith text the forearms of osiris ani triumphant are the forearms of the lady of sais vignette the god set text the backbone of osiris ani triumphant is the backbone of set vignette a god text the chest of osiris ani triumphant is the chest of the lords of kur abba vignette a god 
Text: The flesh of Osiris Ani triumphant is the flesh of the mighty one of terror. Vignette: A god. Text: The reins and back of Osiris Ani triumphant are the reins and back of Sekhet. Vignette: An Uchat upon a pylon. Text: The buttocks of Osiris Ani triumphant are the buttocks of the eye of Horus. Vignette: Osiris wearing the Atef crown and holding the flail and crook. Text: The phallus of Osiris Ani triumphant is the phallus of Osiris. Vignette: The goddess Nut. Text: The legs of Osiris Ani triumphant are the legs of Nut. Vignette: The god Ptah standing on the pedestal of Maat. Text: The feet of Osiris Ani triumphant are the feet of Ptah. Vignette: The star Orion. Text: The fingers of Osiris Ani triumphant are the fingers of Orion. Vignette: Three Uii. Text: The leg bones of Osiris Ani triumphant are the leg bones of the living Uii. Chapter forty-three. Vignette: In the Theban recension, this chapter is without a vignette. In the Turin papyrus, the deceased is seen adoring three gods, each of whom holds the emblem of life in his right hand and a scepter in his left. Text: The chapter of not letting the head of a man be cut off from him in the underworld. Osiris Ani triumphant saith, "I am the great one, son of the great one." i am fire the son of fire to whom was given his head after it had been cut off the head of osiris was not taken away from him let not the head of osiris ani be taken away from him i have knit myself together i have made myself whole and complete i have renewed my youth i am osiris the lord of eternity chapter forty four vignette the scribe ani clothed in white and seated in a chair he holds in the right hand the kerp scepter and in the left a long staff before him is a table in the turin papyrus the deceased is seen standing before a funeral coffer or shrine text the chapter of not dying a second time in the underworld osiris ani triumphant saith my place of hiding is opened my place of hiding is revealed the khus have fallen into the darkness but the eye of horus hath made me mighty and the god apuat hath nursed me like a babe i have hidden myself with you o ye stars that never diminish my brow is like unto that of ra my face is open my heart is upon its throne i have power over the speech of my mouth i have knowledge in very truth i am ra himself i am not held to be a person of no account and violence shall not be done unto me thy father liveth for thee o son of nut i am thy son o great one and i have seen the hidden things which belong unto thee i am crowned king of the gods i shall not die a second time in the underworld chapter forty five vignette the mummy of the scribe ani being embraced by anubis jackal-headed the god of the dead text the chapter of not suffering corruption in the underworld osiris ani triumphant saith o thou who canst not move like unto osiris o thou who canst not move like unto osiris o thou whose limbs cannot move like unto those of osiris let not thy limbs be without movement let them not suffer corruption let them not pass away let them not decay and let them be fashioned for me as if i myself were osiris rubric if the deceased know this chapter he shall never suffer corruption in the underworld chapter forty six vignette the doorway of the tomb by one post stands the soul of the scribe ani in the form of a human-headed hawk and by the other the benu bird text the chapter of not perishing and of becoming alive in the underworld osiris ani saith hail ye children of the god shu hail ye children of the god shu the tuat underworld hath gained the mastery over his diadem like the hamamet beings may i arise even as osiris doth arise and fare forth chapter forty seven 
vignette in the theban recension this chapter has no vignette but in the turin papyrus a funeral shrine is depicted with the soul of the deceased on one side of it and the bennu bird on the other text the chapter of not allowing the seat and throne of nu the overseer of the palace and chancellor-in-chief to be taken away from him in the underworld he saith o my seat o my throne come ye to me and go ye round about me i am your lord o ye gods come ye and take up your places in my train i am the son of your lord and ye belong to me through my divine father who hath made you chapter forty seven o my seat o my throne come ye to me and go ye round about me o ye gods i am a spiritual body sa therefore let me rise up among those who follow the great god i am the son of maati and that which he abominateth is the speech of falsehood i am in triumph chapter forty eight this chapter is given twice in the saita recension once as chapter ten and once as chapter forty eight chapter forty nine this chapter is given twice in the saite recension once as chapter eleven and once as chapter forty nine chapter fifty a vignette in the papyrus of ani and in the turin papyrus the deceased is represented standing with his back to a gory knife which rests on its block text the chapter of not entering in unto the block of the god nebseni saith the four bones or knots of my neck and back have been joined together for me by the guardian of heaven who stablished the knot for him who lay helpless at the breasts of his mother on the day of cutting off the hair the bones of my neck and back have been knit together by the god set and by the company of the gods as strongly as they were in the time that is past may nothing happen to break them apart make ye me strong the goddess nut hath joined together the bones of my neck and back and they are even as they were in the time that is past when i saw the true birth of the gods in visible forms take place in its true and right order i am petty and i am in the presence of the great god chapter fifty b text the chapter of not entering in unto the block the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i have joined up my head and neck in heaven and in earth behold it is ra who day by day establisheth the knot for him who stood helpless upon his legs on the day of cutting off the hair the god suti and the company of the gods have joined together my neck and my back strongly and they are even as they were in the time that is past may nothing happen to break them apart make ye me strong against the slaughterer of my divine father i have gotten power over my two lands the goddess nut hath joined together the bones of my neck and back and i behold them as they were in the time that is past when as yet i had not seen maat and when the gods were not born in visible forms i am penti and i am in the form of the destroyer of the great gods End of chapters forty one through fifty